Good morning, Mount Olive. We want to give you uh, our next devotion. And our devotion is going to come from 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And so we want to read you something from your U version devotion. It talks about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, to know this guy, he was uh, a minister in, in Germany at the time of Nazi Germany, Ger Nazi, Nazism, uh, and the Nazi movement. And he was actually in prison for two years, and he was a minister during that time. So he knows suffering, and he knows uh, evil in the world. And as he ministered in the shadow of this Nazi machine, he wrote, In obedience and faith alone, the church took up the struggle ordained for her. From the world alone, she may, from the word alone, she may be led. For her Lord, she gladly gave up all cares, all security, all friendships with the world. Read that again. Uh, remember, this guy saw Nazi Germany, all the evil, and he says, From the word alone, the church will be led. For her Lord, or Jesus, she gladly gave up all cares, all security, all friendships with the world. Yes, her way leads also through distress. But the Lord bound us not to yield or give in. Do we want to give in today or yield today for sake of friendship with the world? Do we want to sell our calling for the mess of pottage of just a safe future? Through our own behavior, we are making the gospel of our church unworthy of belief. I thought that was a very good uh, quote. And so from your first John's devotion, it says it is clear that there is a common way of life, a common way of life that is opposed to the things of God, a way that seems to help one maybe get ahead in this life, but actually opposed to God. So that's kind of the thought we're going to be talking about this morning. Um, so as we look, we're going to share our screen with you now, and we're going to look at uh, our scriptures for devotion. So let's go. First of all, what is the theme? What is the theme? The theme of this study is that we are a family. We are a family. So that's the theme of this study today. And and for First John, it's been very good so far. It's been very good. Uh, we are a family. Study of First John. Also here, what we're going to see uh, is we're going to see love. Love. And how did that affect our family relationship? Love. And so I guess the question is, what do we love supremely? Look at what it says here. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. When you look at love, do not love the world, this word for love is agape. So this is the kind of love that God and, and Jesus has for us. Do not agape. It means to value, to esteem, to feel or manifest generous concern for, to value or esteem. So it says, do not value or esteem the world. Do not value or esteem the world. That's what it says. Why? Uh, because uh, the world is, this is living in a fashion that is in rebellion to God. That's what the world is. God loved the world. But you know what he hates? The world system, which is a way of life that is in rebellion to God. The world is a lifestyle of living in opposite to God. Two things to not love here. Look at what it says. Two things to not love. Get them. The world and the things of the world. The things of the world. The absence of love is hate then, isn't it? So this is the greatest as, as John is talking here about maturing Christians, and Brett talked about that, this is the greatest challenge. Listen to this. The greatest challenge among maturing Christians is, you know, the, the greatest temptation that Satan brings is to get our passions and our affections away from God and on the world and the things of the world. I think we first stop in, in any devotion, we ask ourselves, does that characterize my Christian walk in the last few weeks, last few months? Love not the world, neither the things of the world, above God. 
You know, when you're first saved, you're so excited about being saved. You want everybody to know. But, and that's a normal experience. But over time, what happens? We forget the love of our God. And we forget how his love, how he displayed his love for us on the cross. That, that bears less weight and less meaning. And we begin to let our passion cool and our love wane. And we begin to look to the world system and the things of the world. Um, and so remember what uh, he told the church of Ephesus. I know your works. I know your patience. I've tried you. I've labored. You have a great testimony. Nevertheless, I have something to get you against you. You left your first love. The Church of Ephesus, Revelation chapter 12. Does that characterize TJ today? Have I left that first love of God when I was covered by his mercy and his grace? Love not the world system, a lifestyle of rebellion to God or op opposition to God's will. Neither the things of the world. That's what the Bible says. If any man, right, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And you remember Paul talked about a man named Demas. What did Demas do? Demas was a minister with Paul, and he forsook Paul. He left Paul high dry. You think on a missionary journey, why? Because he loved the things of the world. It's powerful. And how many times do we see people of uh, their love of the world and the things of the world, lose their passion and their love for God. Look what it says here next. All that's in the world system, all that's in that lifestyle, okay, is the lust of the flesh, your itch, that little itch uh, that you just crave, you hunger for in your life. And put it in context. What thing of the world, what lifestyle of the world really Brings a craving into your life. You just love it. You enjoy it. Next, what is uh, it? All that's in the world is a lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. Man, you see stuff and you want it. You want it. Uh, the lust of the flesh is sinful desires, immoral desires, such as drunkenness, gluttony, and those types of things. The lust of the eyes is it mental desires. So simple desires coming from your flesh is lust of the flesh mental desires and imaginations of the natural man, covetousness, adultery in the mind after someone else. And then we got the pride of life, which is arrogance over the possessions or the obtaining of things, uh, the building of a company. You have arrogance. I uh, said, look what I have done or what I have made. Uh, and, and an example uh, would be Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament. He said, look at great Babylon that I have made. So look what he says. There's three ways in which you're going to be tempted, and it's going to come from the world system right now in your life, today. It's either going to be the lust of your flesh, sinful desires in the flesh, lust of the eyes, sinful imaginations and thoughts, desires, and the pride of life, which is uh, arrogance, arrogance. And so, and look what it says, this is not a father, but is of the world. Where is, a great, where is a great example in the Bible in which this happened? You're right, as I talked last Wednesday night, in the wilderness to Jesus. What did Satan do? He came to Jesus and he said, you've been fasting for 40 days. Let this bread, let this bread, be, uh, make, uh, make these work, stones become bread. His flesh, he was hungry. And Jesus said, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, uh, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That was the lust of the flesh. And then he took him up and he showed him, uh, and he said, if you just jump off this cliff, you know God will come and save you because you're the son of God. And what's that? That is the pride of life, arrogance. And then he said, uh, took him up on a high mountain, and he said, look at all these great kingdoms in the world. And he said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give these to you. What's that? That's uh, the lust of the eyes. And so Jesus was tempted in all those points. But you know what? Jesus overcame. And because of that, he gives us the power and the ability to overcome those three temptations. But that's the way that you're going to be tempted. All that's in the world, in this present world, right, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this is not of the Father, but this is of the world. 
And then the last verse, he says, um, remember all that's in the, all, uh, in the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so we see that the world will pass away. All money, all land, all successes, everything you can have, it will pass away and will not stand. It is temporary. John says, in fact, it's already passing away. It doesn't seem that way. It appears that it's getting stronger. But here it says that it's already in a coffin. And you're not going to take a U-Haul with you to heaven. Ain't that right? And so, but he that does the will of God, and I want to cross-reference that word will. He that does the will of God, that word will of God is God's desire, God's decisions, God's inclinations, God's purpose. Those who do the will of God abideth forever. That means to remain, to live and dwell. Remember, that's another key word. Abiding in love is what we see here in this devotion. We will abide in God forever. If you can't abide in the world and abide with God, it's one or the other. And you can abide forever, which means eternal life. And so that's a great devotion this morning. I hope that we've brought it out clear to you. Um, and so uh, I guess we'll end you with, it, with this. What you do in this world what you do in this life after you're a Christian will determine your ad eternal identity in some degree. People will obtain rewards in the eternity. And so what we do in this life, the parable of the servants, he gave them so many talents and the king went away. And if they, and then they used those talents, they got rewarded. But the one who did not use those talents, he got uh, judged. And so, God has given you talents, talents to be used in this life. And we will be rewarded because it, he who does the will of God abides forever. So Abraham will be forever known as the friend of God. David will be forever known as a man after God's own heart. That's what they did in this life. What will you and I be remembered? When I get to heaven, what will I be remembered as? Um, and so we want to read our scriptures one more time, and then we're going to be done. Uh, but as, as we approach the end of the devotion, we hope that, that, that you've learned something. Uh, and I want, to, I want to point something out, else out to you before we, before we quit. And he is speaking to maturing Christians, right? So he's trying to help them mature in their Christian walk. So one thing that will come in opposition to your Christian walk is this love of the world, okay? This love of the world. Let's read it again together. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust will too. They're already in their coffin. All the things of the world, and those that live the lifestyle of the world, they're, they're already in their coffin. But he that doeth the will of God, abideth forever what do we touch on we are a family and we continue in that family we need to love god supremely and if we love god supremely we will abide with him forever and have eternal life we hope today that uh, we, you've gained something in this devotion and we pray that you have a wonderful wonderful day